There are stories and legends about one island described as a lost paradise that has captured the imagination of writers and filmmakers throughout many generations. This island has been linked with many locations, such as the Isle of Man or Glastonbury, but its true location and origin may be more profound than people give credit for. We have embarked on a journey that starts from a place which the name derives from an ancient Celtic name, meaning the Isle of Glass, but in modern times was translated to the most suspicious of names. The name is Thor. In the English country of Somerset is Glastonbury Tor. This hill has been considered sacred since ancient times. In the 13th century, the Celtic people lived here in monastic settlements, and before then, this hill was of religious significance amongst the ancient Druids and Pagans. Local legend states that this is where the Paradise Island of Avalon was located this peninsula having been an island in ancient times. The structure on top is called the Tor and represents a gateway into Avalon. It's a remnant of a medieval church which was destroyed by earthquake in 1275. Surrounding are seven man-made concentric rings of terraces. What their purpose was still remains unclear but perhaps they have more to do with magnetism than meets the eye. The Chalice Well is a well situated at the foot of this hill. The well is said to represent the feminine aspect of this holy site, and the phallic-shaped tor on top the masculine. Could this mysterious site, known throughout the country as the heart of England, be where the island of Avalon used to be? Another suggested location, though less popular, is the Isle of Man. Because of its similarities in name, it's been associated with Imain Ablach, which is the abode of Mananan, the Irish god of the sea. The island was said to be a realm of healing, where youth was eternal and where there was no winter where golden apples grew in abundance. Avalon is what the Arthurian texts call the Fortunate Isles. It is the sacred land described in Arthurian legend and Celtic mythology. Avalon is thought of as the inner temple of the Celtic and British mysteries, a landscape of the soul, a country of the heart. It is the land which the poet and mystic sees in vision, where the artist and musician finds inspiration. 
where the soul goes for healing and spiritual refreshment. The name Avalon is connected to the ancient Proto-Celtic word Abal, meaning apple. For us, the first clue was obvious. If you remember, the name Shambhala contains the word Bala that has a Persian root, meaning divine. The word Abal in this case, is just an anagram of Bala, but the meaning is now Apple. So the question is, are we talking about a divine Apple? Surely it can't be a coincidence that Shambhala means divine candle, and that Avalon share an anagram of that root word. Well, people from different areas and locations, they develop different accents. And usually the letter B and V are commonly changed. A ball, the apple, has changed to a vowel. And Avalon got the meaning of the Isle of Apples. It did not take long for people to pinpoint that Avalon was actually located in the Isle of Man. The connection was made because of this name, Imain Alba, that translates to Island of Apple Trees. But beside the name, the description of Avalon has nothing to do with the Isle of Man. But the story stood the test of time, and still today many people believe that the Island of Avalon is indeed the Isle of Man. In more recent times, scholars have translated documents from the 6th century, where Avalon is described as Insula Porurum Fortunata, first translated to Old French, where the meaning again was Island of Apples. But there was a mistake. The translation should have been Island by the Sea, characterized by abundance. Fortunata, a place of fortune, a place verdant and with abundance, a place where people lived long lives. We can say that we heard that before. The same description was written in the legend of Shambhala, making the two legends very similar indeed. The first mention of Avalon is found in History of the Kings of Britain by the 12th century cleric Geoffrey of Monmouth, who wrote that King Arthur's magnificent sword Excalibur was forged there. Geoffrey's description of the island indicates a sea voyage was needed to get there. He writes, The island of apples which men call the Fortunate Isle gets its name from the fact that it produces all things of itself. The fields there have no need of the plows of the farmers, and all cultivation is lacking except what nature provides. The ground of its own accord produces everything instead of merely grass, and people live there a hundred years or more. There, nine sisters rule by a pleasing set of laws, those who come to them from our country. These nine sisters are fairy priestesses led by the enchantress Morgan Le Fay. According to Geoffrey's Vita Merlini, they are capable of changing form and flying, and act as initiators to those who voyage to the mystical island. Isidore of Seville wrote in his work Etymologia another description of Avalon, reading, The fortunate isles signify by their name that they produce all kinds of good things, as if they were happy and blessed with an abundance of fruit. Avalon is most noted as the place where King Arthur 
is taken after his final battle at the Battle of Camlon. Seriously wounded by his opponent Mordred, Arthur is transported to Avalon in order to be healed, and in some folklore, Arthur still resides in Avalon, having been healed and is now immortal. In the Middle Ages, Avalon turned into the place where the Holy Grail was kept. In a number of versions, this sacred vessel of immortality is housed in a castle called the Four Peak Fortress on an otherworld island which is known as Anwin. The Welsh poem The Spoils of Anwin describes a raid on this island by Arthur and his men. They journey by boat seeking the cauldron of inspiration. There, they are met by nine fairies who are protecting this cauldron. The parallels with the nine fairies who dwell on Avalon make it clear that Anwin is simply another name for the same land. Over the years, this cauldron was turned into a holy chalice of immortality. It is written, I am honored in praise, song was heard, in the four-peaked fortress, for its revolutions, my poetry, from the cauldron it was uttered, from the breath of nine maidens, it was kindled." The Celtic mythology of Anwen dates back hundreds of years before any mention of Avalon. Like Avalon, it is a world of delights and eternal youth, where disease is absent and food is ever abundant. However, as Wales and the surrounding Celtic areas became more Christian in the mid-centuries AD, Anwin became associated with the Christian hell, and all paradisal descriptions moved to the separate myth of Avalon. The true location of Avalon is in the far north, on an island that can only be reached by sea. As William Warren, author of Paradise Found suggests, as the Celtic terrestrial paradise, Avalon, was a sea-girt island in the waters of the north. In Celtic tradition, the tree of paradise is represented by the tree which bore golden apples in Avalon. But Avalon is always represented as an island in the far north, and its lodestone castle self-evidently connects it with the region of the magnetic pole. Lodestone means a naturally magnetized mineral or rock, and this castle Warren refers to is known in the myths as Chateau de Avalon. Indeed, the stories which describe this castle makes one focus on the North Pole, where lay the source of all magnetism. The Chateau de Avalon is perhaps the Rupes Nigra, the magnetic rock described by 16th century cartographer Gerhard Mercator in his maps of the Arctic. History is his story, so it's not a stretch to think that such a sacred majestic island would be occulted, its location now pinpointed in Glastonbury, which is neither paradisal or an island. But Glastonbury does show us a representation of the North Pole, giving us the Axis Mundi, or central pillar on top with seven rings of terraces, which can be interpreted as the seven rings of golden mountains that surround Mount Maru in Asian cosmology, or as simply the ever-present magnetic field. This clue has been given to us, showing us a representation of the central axis at the Arctic, while simultaneously fooling us into believing that the model is the actual historical location. If we wish to find Avalon, we must sail towards the four-peaked fortress, the Lodestone Castle, where the Tor, or toroidal field, comes from. Those who seek Avalon are the ones who are called there to traverse the deep, reflective waters of the unconscious. 
moving through the layers of illusion that restrict our ability to see with clarity so that we may journey past the furthest reaches of our self-imposed limitations. It is then that we are able to reach that distant land, that shining isle of wisdom that lies at the core of each and every one of us. The unveiling will continue.